Hey everyone, this is Daniel and this is a continuation of my Power Apps Container Series, video number two. Now in this one, we're gonna focus on the horizontal and the vertical container. And I'm gonna ease you into using that, you know, take an example of how you can say use a button menu. And after that, you'll be all set for video number three, where we're gonna build a fully responsive homepage. But first, here's my intro video. So what I've done is I've already gone ahead and um, created a Canvas app. And as you can see, the layout and everything, and it's just simple. What I also did was go, went ahead and kind of divided it into three different sections. Because what I wanted to do first was do a little side-by-side -side comparison with how we used to build the you know uh, vertical uh, button menu. So as an example, all right, if this was way back in the day where we didn't even think of using galleries, I would just come over here and I'd add a button. Now, if I really wanted to use that as a button menu, I just do a control C, control V, control V, control V, control V. And this is how I would have to do it. Next, sort it up nicely, you know, put, put a little bit of manual effort into it. And, you know, if I really wanted to be accurate, I'd make sure that the X and Y locations were the same. I'd make sure that the um, height was the same. And I just have to do all of that, you know, extra work to make it a little successful. Well, then came the concept of using the gallery. So in the gallery, what I can do is I would first have to come up with a kind of a temporary collection to add all these buttons. So what I did was on the app on start, I went ahead and actually added this little clear collect formula. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna put this formula, and it's a very simple thing. It's a button collection, I've called one column as title, and I'm naming that as screen one, screen two, screen three. So now when I come over here, I come and do an app, app run on start, I've actually built that collection, and here's my collection. So if I, I'm gonna go ahead and add it, I would basically just come over here, I'd come to a vertical um, gallery. In that gallery, I would just have to do a little bit of cleaning up, so I can come over here, I'd just go ahead and actually just add that. Get rid of that one over here, and then I, I'll also go ahead and drop a button in uh, right here. Take out this one, and then I'd attach that to our gallery. And what I do here is replace the text and the text would be this item title. And see, that's a lot more cleaner, right? In fact, I could take it one step further and I'll delete this separator. And this is how it is, a lot cleaner, a lot more efficient, but there's some side work involved in that. I mean, for example, and I'm just using this as just a, a proof of concept because you wouldn't actually normally do something crazy like this, but say for whatever reason, all right, you wanted to move just the top button to the left for whatever aesthetic design or you might have a legitimate reason to kind of make all those buttons in a squiggly shape and design, I can't easily do that. What I would have to do is I would have to actually for the button in the X side, I would have to put in a formula, something like this. I would have to put in an if statement and I would say that if this item title equals screen one, then move it to zero, otherwise keep it at that, say it was like 48. See, now you see what I'm saying is that there's there's a little bit of effort involved in doing manipulations to give it that, you know, um, one of its kind look in that in the button over there in the gallery. So kind of get an idea of what I'm doing over here. Um, two, two things we have to do. First of all, I would have to go and app on start and create a collection, a temporary collection. And then if I wanted to sort each of these things out in a very specific, uh, unique way for each and every button, I would have to come up with some if conditions over there. So I kind of set the foundation of how it is right now. And I kind of showed you almost an evolution of buttons by themselves, adding buttons in a gallery. But now we've got the nice container series. So let's check that out, all right? I'm gonna come over here now and I'm going to click on the plus inside the, um, inside the layout place over here. We're gonna drop the vertical container. So in my vertical container, I come back over here so I can actually see it. Yep, it's my vertical container. Let me go and put this away here for a side-by-side -side comparison. I'll make it a little nice and big. And here now, I'm gonna drop the same buttons. In fact, I'm gonna replicate this over here. But check what happens. I mean, check, check this out. So now I click on one, two, three, four, five. And you see how well it has lined up over here? None of this happened where it kind of went in this one angle area. None of that happened. It just lined up nicely over here. But let's not just stop over there because what I can do is if for whatever reason, if I changed my mind, I can now automatically change this to the horizontal one. So I'm gonna change the direction 
over here to horizontal. And you see it changes over here on the menu as well. And I can bring that back to the vertical. So for the rest of the next few minutes, I'm going to focus just on the direction, which is vertical. They're lining up this way. But everything I'm going to show you here also aligns with the, um, the horizontal one. So the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of center it a little bit. So in the justify vertical, you come and hover over here on the center and I click on that and it centers it. But keep that in mind because sometimes you might get a little confusing. Okay, I'm justifying it. It's centered, but it's, it's the center of vertical. Verticals are the ups and downs. And now when I want to align the horizontal piece and I come over here, it moves it right in between. So kind of play around a little bit with that because sometimes you, you know you, you, like you might think that oh this was supposed to be on the top to bottom but it's actually left to right. So moment you play around with that and focus on the text because this is justifying the vertical. It went down in between and then in the horizontal. All right, let's keep moving on. Now what I can do is I can play around a little bit with stretching it. So I can actually on the vertical side I can stretch it this way, and I can stretch it this way, and that's pretty slick, right? But let's not stop over there because now. We're going to replicate back to what I did over here. And so what did I do over there is that one particular button right in this gallery section, one particular button I wanted to change. It's either layout or design or just basically focus on the change on that one button over here. And I want to do that over here. Now, remember, in this one over here, I had to put in some formulas and I had to kind of really, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. But what I'm going to do now over here, first, let me just go and center it just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do over here is I'm actually going to click on the button and I can do that. I can click on this one. I can click on this one because you can't do that on the gallery, right? Everything you do is always on the first one. You can't really do any of this. Like I'm clicking, clicking, nothing's happening. It's the first button that actually only, you know, uh, responds to my click, but not in a container. In a container, each and every button responds to my click. So now I'm going to focus on the first one. And the first one, I have the option to align in a container. It is by default set with everything in the container. So whatever you put the buttons in the container, that button can by default set all the alignments and the justifies for that entire container. But I can also customize it. Well, then how does that change things? Well, it changes a lot. So I can go now do that. I can go ahead and make it a flexible height. I can go ahead and even, you know, mess around with things like, okay, this width, I don't want it at 160. I want it at 100. So you, you, you kind of see what I'm doing over here. I'm giving you the all the ideas that this flexibility inside a container where it gives you the container. I can contain all of these things. I can go ahead and you know uh, make it the design a little bit more easier to work with, but it also gives you that granular level flexibility to play around and design each and every one of these buttons. So I can really go crazy with it. You know, I can click on that button and I can align it in a custom way. I can make it completely wide. This one, I can go ahead and move this one, set that container over there custom, and I'm going to move that to the right. Just things like that, you know, it's, it makes it so much more easier. I can mess around with that one so that it goes ahead and takes that one half, or you know, I can just fill the portions. I can do it, all of these fun things over here. Um, I'll go ahead and, um, you know, change that back to the by set by container and, you know, do fun things over here. But I want to end with this piece by actually, no, I want to end. I want to show you that if I were now to take this, okay, and let's say I have copied it now to a new Canvas app. We go ahead and, um, yeah, let's go back to the same tablet layout. And I'm going to basically just copy that container over there because I want to show you that besides the fact that we, we, you know, we got comfortable with the container, if I go ahead and take this one now, Control C, come over here. Control V, paste it in. Now check this out. Okay, I'm going to take that container, the entire container, and I'm going to try to make it a little bit responsive. So it's width. I'm going to match that to the app width. All right. Match, and then its location is going to be X, which is zero by default. All right. In fact, I can go ahead and take that all the way up over here. So it does it automatically just to confirm its width is app width. Its height is going to be app height. All right. And so now inside this, all right, inside this, if I go ahead and well, also one important thing, I got to go to the screen size orientation and I got to make it completely responsive. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply that. Now, if I go ahead and play it, it automatically went ahead and filled that in. But check this out. It is now fully responsive. See, fully responsive. 
In fact, you see how the button width is automatically growing over there. But you see what I did? I didn't have to mess with making each of the buttons responsive. I just had to mess with the container being responsive, which I added the app width, app height, made sure it was located on the most top left, and then everything inside automatically became responsive. Now you might have scenarios where you've got a lot of buttons and that's okay. I can always come back over here. I can go ahead and now again select the container and I use this option for scrolling either base. See? So if I go back and do a test again, if I go ahead and start putting it a little bit too small, the scrolling functionality comes up over here and actually inside the container. Or if I make it a little bit small, the scrolling functionality comes up over here. So it gives you all that flexibility. So now that you've understood all of this, you know, in the first one I did the introduction, in this one I gave you a good overview of how we can add buttons, and then we can take all those buttons and fill up in the container. In the next video, we're gonna focus on this one over here. We're gonna now take, make a home page together, make a home screen together, and we're gonna make that screen fully responsive. So this is gonna be part two, three, and let me show you what that means. I come over here, and you see that? It's fully responsive. Like the button sizes change, the text size changes, those icons change, like on the one on the top left, the hamburger menu, the settings gear over here. See that when I expand it, each of them are changing, but check this out. If I go in now here and I go ahead and get our more tools and I do the developer tools, if I were to change it from portrait to landscape, see what happens. See that? Full response of 100% over there. So you see what I just showed you? Now you've kind of got an understanding of the containers, the horizontal and the vertical one over there, putting stuff inside it, playing around with each of them, giving them custom, but how I was able to take that one example and make it responsive. Now the next video is gonna be a really nice one because I've shown you an example, and that one will go ahead and build that one from scratch, and that's gonna be really cool. So I hope you're excited to see that next one, and as always, keep power apping.